Huh, wow, you really do just flip the screen and the thing turns on and starts recording. Uh, welcome out here on my BMX bike. We are on the Pocket 3. I can't tell if the horizon's a little crooked. I feel like it's not really, I haven't set to FPV mode. Uh, I think it's balanced now and it just turned on face tracking, which is not really something that's useful in every scenario, but it's on. Pocket 3, we have it. We're going to do some BMX tests with it today. We're out here in downtown LA. Behind me is the city. Okay, well, we're gonna just turn the face tracking off. That's my. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Uh, this camera is, it seems pretty cool. It's like a camera that I never really thought about owning. The Pocket 1 and 2 were never on my radar whatsoever because uh, they just weren't really that good in my opinion. I'm about to cross through uh, the border. This is what I call the border coming to the downtown. You gotta go through this underpass, which is pretty hectic. Got a lot of gang graffiti on this side. Um, but then once you get through, look at the M3. Uh, if, so for me using this camera, it's kind of like any situation where I would use my phone, I'd like to have it in my pocket. We're about to head to Staples Center. I'm gonna like uh, show you guys kind of the usability of it, my initial thoughts. And we're gonna try and do a little bit of BMX testing. Uh, I did get the package with the microphone, so we'll be testing that out too. We are in the middle of the street, straight up. Uh, in traffic. So we have the external mic right now. This is like a pretty decent wind test. It's relatively windy. It's kind of a chilly night out here in downtown. So if you can hear me loud and clear, then uh, that's, uh, I'd say that's pretty impressive, you know? All right, so this kind of fills a gap for me as a camera that didn't really exist before because this isn't something I usually be into. Downtown LA, actually. Uh, the pocket, the DJI pocket stuff is just, it's not really something that would uh, would be on my radar as far as like a camera I'd want to buy. But when I saw this one, I was pretty astounded at the capabilities from the few videos I saw on YouTube. You know, it came out yesterday. I bought it that day. It came in today. But anyways, so I come from a background of being like, uh, you know, working with cameras. Like I, I used to work as a camera operator for like a, a small production company. So I've worked with a lot of different cameras. I had an FX9 back when that came out. Sony actually gave me that camera. It's like a $15,000 setup. So I'm familiar with like big cameras. I've had a7S, one, two, and three. I've had a7, pretty much every a7, a series camera. I've had big Panasonic's going back and back in the day. So I'm a camera dude. Nowadays, I like just using my GoPros. That's pretty much the only cameras I use entirely for my entire channel, along with uh, my phone every now and then. I do like the idea of having like a more traditional camera for certain things, but the thing is, one, mirrorless cameras are still big, even though they're smaller than anyone who remembers DSLRs that could film like Philip Bloom with the 5D Mark II. Back in those days, it was still big, but even then, that was revolutionary because before that, a cinema camera was like this big thing, right? Fast forward to 2023, we have this thing, which uh, let me show you how it looks in my hand. It's pretty small. So first off, this is the actual device. Let me show you a little bit better how it looks. This is like a tripod adapter. I'm gonna show you that in a second. This is the actual size of the device. It is. It's literally miniature. It's so small. I couldn't even believe how tiny it was when I took it out of the box. I feel like people's hands in the videos on YouTube are not really doing it justice to how small the standalone device is. It is truly, it is pocket size. So you flip it up, stops recording. You can also cancel this if you want, if you want to continue recording. It does this. Uh, and then you can fit it in your pocket like this. This, it's, I mean, it's in there. It's, I feel like it's relatively safe. If I was gonna be using this on a real shoot, I would have zipper pockets for sure, just to make sure it doesn't fall out. And if you fall on this thing, well, it's broken. Okay, so that's one other problem is it, it starts in a weird direction and then you gotta triple tap it and then it does this 180 thing. When you take it out of your pocket, if you're actually just using it in your pocket, the gimbal is gonna get flipped around, the camera is gonna get tossed around. So I think it's, it expects itself to be in one spot. So that flip to open and then it automatically starts recording feature is kind of like, I wouldn't say useless, but you have to double tap and then triple tap before you can get a useful recording. Some of the time is what I've noticed in my testing around my house and now, just now, like you guys saw, I took it out of my pocket uh, and started recording and I had to double tap it, to level it, and then triple tap it to turn it around. And then it has to do the, the screen flip because otherwise I'm mirrored it's fine but I think overall when I use this I will turn the flip screen to ro like record off because it's kind of like I don't know requires further testing I'd say this is day one so I do plan on using this camera in my arsenal so there's a couple things I want to test first off I'm going to test off the tracking I'm going to do some BMX tricks right here on this ledge I'm going to get some low light footage it's obviously nighttime but we're in a very well lit part of downtown LA as you can see these gigantic 
blindingly bright billboards uh, will provide us enough light. And we'll also go in some darker areas to see how it fares there as well. We have the wide angle attachment and we have the mic attachment. So we're gonna give a, a thorough test of all the things that uh, this camera is capable of. And then I'm gonna give my thoughts on it. My initial ones are, like I said, I don't like using big bulky DSLRs because I'm always riding around on my bike. Also, I live in LA, so it's like pretty sketch to put down like a $4,000 camera setup on a Gorillapod anywhere. So I can't, that's not really an option for me and it hasn't been for a while for the, the type of, you know, videos that I make. I'm always on the move constantly. This is a pretty decent compliment for that type of filmmaking, I'd say, or riding or vlogging or whatever you want to call it. We'll see. This is going to be a, the beginning of a long-term test for me, but uh, we're going to start off. We're going to do some tricks. We're going to 180 off of this ledge right here. Let's see how it does with the tracking. We're going to have to open up the phone and sync it up with the app so it can, I can draw like a box around myself. Okay, so step one is going to be open up the DJI app. By the way, it's not sponsored. Obviously, I would have disclosed that at the beginning. DJI, reach out to me if you want to sponsor me, but it's an unsponsored video. I gotta say, this footage looks exceptional on my phone. So I'm already really excited about how it looks. It just it looks so good. It's kind of stunning how well it looks. It almost is better than any footage I've gotten out of a DSLR back when I used to use one. I'm really excited about this as well. I have a DJI mic I don't like using. or Like I said, all my stuff is constantly moving around. So this receiver is built into the camera. So all you have to do is turn it on. It automatically syncs up every single time. Uh, and then, Hello? Hello? You can check the levels on the app or on the screen. There's like a little green bar. So I I'm pretty sure this is on. I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> so we're going to clip this onto my hoodie. Seems pretty sturdy. Seems sturdy enough. I don't know if it's, hopefully it doesn't fall off. It's kind of strangely clipped, but we'll see. Should be fine. It's going to be a little, uh, it's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride. So anyways, with that done, we're going to back up, scroll down a little bit, and then I'm going to draw a box around myself. Okay. So now it's tracking my face. I'm going to lock my phone and see if I can 180 off of this ledge and stay in frame. Even if I go out of frame, it should bring me back in or like recapture myself when I uh, when I get back in the frame. So we're just gonna send it. I'll try not to go too far. Let's see if it's even working from here. Yeah, looks like, okay, so far so good. So we're, I'm gonna turn around, jump on this thing and just 180 right off. Let's see if I stay in frame. Okay, it definitely lost me. Where did it lose me though? It lost me before I even got on the ledge. And it's, okay, uh, that was a fail. It was a little confused. I have to remember that it has a 180 kind of field of view as far as usefulness for the gimbal. Like it, you know, 180 degrees like this from one corner to the other. It can't do a 360, it can't spin in circles, which uh, as much as I would love for it to do that. We gotta start from square one. It did not capture the 180 at all. We have to open the app up, we have to rejoin it. Kind of a clumsy process when you're trying to like, you know, do stuff. I, I don't see myself doing this very often. I just wanted to test this for, you know, a decent amount of action. So we're gonna go ahead and draw our box. This is how it looks. I know it's probably confusing, but I'm going to draw a box and it's gonna look like that. And I draw one over myself back there. Okay, so I kind of drew a bigger box this time. Let's see if it can, follow me up here. Okay, so it's still following me. This is where it's starting to have trouble. I think the bigger box is helping. Nope, it lost me right there. Now it's tracking something else entirely. Okay, let's start over. Okay, we're gonna draw our box again. Now it is tracking me a little bit more specifically. Hopefully it, the contrast kind of helps with the bike in the background. Back up over here. Let's just ride along first before I do an aggressive 180. See if it can follow me even just doing this. Nope, lost me. Okay, so I think there might be, there's probably like a max range upon which this works and I'm going out of it. That's what I'm thinking. From here to there, I wanna say it's like 15 feet, so it's not even that far. Uh, let's try it one more time. Okay, we got our box on me. Let's go ahead and come over here. I wanna say I'm moving too fast. Even just that, it, it lost it. So that's uh, that's a little disappointing. Okay, we're gonna turn it on a regular follow mode so it doesn't have to worry about going up and down. Let's see if that helps. Gonna draw our box. Okay, now it's locked onto my face. Let's see if it can follow me up and down without jumping on. It's kind of panning up in a strange way. Coming this way. Okay, it definitely did a better job of following me there. And it's still following me. Okay, it's definitely having some trouble here. Maybe the lighting's bothering it. And it lost me. So the problem here is it's just looking way too high up. Like, why are you looking so way up there? I'm down here. We're gonna hit our level button. That brings it right back to the middle. And we're gonna start one more time. This is our final attempt. We're locked on. One more thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the mode. Okay, we're gonna try one more method. This one is the, um, I don't even know what it's called, but it's uh, it has act active track and it's the middle option. It kind of like, it forces you into a third. You can either be on the right third, the top third, left third, lower third, or dead in the middle. So. Let's see if this creates any difference. Let's do our quick lap. Already lost, immediately lost. That is just painful. 
Okay. As far as this situation, it's just not, it's not working. I guess you need the action for that, right? The DJI action. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I'm gonna give it one more shot. I really want this to work, as you can tell. We're gonna try and pan down. It's a most you can pan down. It will not let me pan any further than this for some reason. I guess while you're active track, it's forcing you into like, uh, you know, keeping my face in the top half. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna just send it. Let's see if it works. This could be the one, right? Okay, right here is a turnaround point. Maybe if I jump on from here. Let's see. Nope, it's already lost me. What if I catch me from here? Okay, wait, from here, I think it might be. Nope, frame too small. Okay, maybe it has me from here. Let's try and find out. We're just gonna send it. Nope, I can already tell. It did not even catch anything. Miserable fail on that test. It didn't even get close one time. You guys didn't even see the 180 I did twice. That sucks. I'm gonna do it in a different way. We're gonna put it in a way where it doesn't have to turn left and right so much. It's just gonna face one direction and uh, see if it can track me that way. I'm gonna put it down right here, somewhere right there, so that I'm in front of it the entire time and see if that makes a difference. If it does, great. If not, then uh, I got nothing. Maybe it's because it's dark. I gotta give this thing a little bit of leeway because we are at nighttime. It is very well lit, as you can see. This is like, it's easily the most well lit part of downtown LA. So. Let's see if it works. All right, we are on the floor. Let's go ahead and open our app one more time. Also, every time you open the app, you have to, it is about a 10 second, 15 second process, which is kind of tedious, but you know. Okay, we're gonna pan up. That is a great shot right there, I gotta say, that's very nice. Then we're gonna draw our box, active, active tracking my face. I feel like going over there is going to lose it. It's already panned up for some weird reason. It's panned up like a lot, and I can't really pan it down from here. Okay, this is the furthest it'll pan down. Let me see if it tracks, if I just go over here. It's for sure gonna lose me like right here. This has gotta be the furthest of its limits. Okay, wait, I might still be in. Okay, this might be the way, this might be the way. I'm still getting tracked, still getting tracked. It's like way too high and it lost me just doing a turn. Be careful to not go outside of its limits. See, I want it like somewhere like here. It will not stay down here though. Let's try to change the setting one more time. Okay, let's just go for it. This is, uh. This is, this is stressing me out at this point. It refuses to pan down though. Like why won't it just pan down a little bit? Okay, let's just try the 180. Did it track, let's find out. Okay. <laughs> okay, and it's not detecting me again and it's complete. I gotta do the double tap and the triple tap. Yup and the double tap and the triple tap. And now it's tracking me, okay. There's definitely some flaws. I think it is not perfect by any means and there are some things that could be ironed out in firmware. The tracking ability, it's not meant for actual you know, sports. That was kind of what I was hoping for. Those are too big of a dream, it's too big of dreams for me to, to be realistic. I'm gonna try again during the day, but at night, even with decent lighting, it is a contrasted situation. So I'm gonna try it one more time on this little three stair i'm gonna try and 180 off of this where i am gonna be perfectly in frame the entire time and the light is facing me see if that makes a difference i think it might i think it, there's a genuine chance that it might overall i think it's definitely for like this stuff just kind of like vlogging holding it to your face and and doing stuff like this which still has a good place in my arsenal for replacing the cell phone entirely i hate filming on my phone some people love it some people have entire channels on their phone i just am not a phone person i think this will be perfect for replacing that uh, let's try the 180 and see how it goes. And honestly, I don't feel like fiddling with the mic. Let's see if it stays tracked on my face. This is the same as the app, so there's no real purpose in opening the app is what I learned. Uh, it's gonna do the exact same thing, which is just track your face. It can't track an entire subject, which is what I thought it was doing. It ultimately is still gonna track a face. So once your face goes out of the frame, it kind of loses you. Let's see if we can uh, kind of get sneaky right here. Also, hand it down. Let's go ahead and pan it down as far as it'll go. It will not pan at all. That's probably my least favorite thing is that I'm forced in this crazy weird framing all the time. Okay, we're gonna try this method, which kind of forces you into a lower frame. I'm still really high. It's still like really high. Like why, why is it all the way up here? Like what's up with all this space? Why do I need this? I don't know. I'm trying to force my head into the top of the frame, but it's still kind of putting me in the middle. It's weird, it's just weird. Let's see if I go out of frame. It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. All right, well, face track, it helps as much as it hurts, you know? 
I think the FPV mode is the way I would personally use this most of the time because the face track kind of, it's like a little too, it's just hard to keep up with. I mean, I gotta say though, the night footage, if you're in like an even decently well-lit area, is phenomenal. I wish it had a little bit wider field of view. We do have the attachment. It'd be cool to use this as like a, a point of view camera. Look at that though. It's kind of crazy that this thing is so small and the night footage looks so good. You know, it is just, it's sick. It's, okay, right there, it stopped. It stopped going because it turned on face track. I would just like to turn the face track shit off entirely. It has its uses, like I guess if you're constantly filming only your face, but if you ever want to film something around you, I think it is more likely to just throw you off than to actually be helpful, which is kind of crazy. I think that's more the point of this. I think uh, also the, the tracking would be really helpful if I'm just filming a video, like, uh, you know, showing off a bike, you know, like sitting there with the bike, maybe, you know, like showing off the features of it or like demonstrating around the bike. So that's that. I do want to set it up and just kind of like do some, some BMX tricks though. We've tested the tracking stuff and it's just not good, but that's fine. I'll just use it without the tracking. I think this is still a one of a kind camera. It still does something that I don't think exists at all. It's, it's pretty mind blowing how good the audio and the video is, which at the end of the day is all that I really care about. All the extra features are like, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, it's also a great B angle. It's fast, it's quick to set up. I don't have to put my phone down, which has my entire personal life in it and risk that getting stolen. I can just put this thing down, which yeah, it's 600 bucks, but pretty non-discreet. It's like hard to even see in the first place. So it's uh, it's a lot easier to get away with doing like, uh, you know, little tricks and stuff. With that said, I'm gonna try and do a little bit more trickery without the uh, the tracking nonsense. See how that goes. All right, we're gonna throw on the wide angle adapter, which is like the most puny piece of plastic ever. I will for sure be losing this, I think. It gives you a 15 mil full frame equivalent field of view, which is actually pretty decent. You could really get away with, with POV in on this thing, I think. Like if we had it like right here, let's see, maybe like here, holding it on the tripod. Eh, kinda, it's pretty tight. You'd have to have it like here, and I don't really have any way to hold it right there. Something like that, it's about to fall, so I can't hold it like this, but that's almost POV worthy. It has a, it has a POV mode, so it's definitely, I think something, they kinda like, wanted this to kind of almost be able to do everything but it's not really quite there it definitely does a few things very well which is picture quality audio ease of use with an external mic those three things are worth the admission price to me you know but i do wish the tracking worked better we're gonna try it again in a day like i said let's just do some tricks where i just set it down see how that feels All right, we got the wide angle on now. Definitely a little bit wider. Uh, it's good for some things. I still think the majority of use cases, my daily driver will remain my GoPro. Also a big reason why I don't use the new uh, DJI Action 4. Oh, got a doggo. Is because I think it's inferior personally to the GoPro. I mean, everyone, it seems like I'm one of the few people that hold that opinion, but me personally, but what I do, the GoPro just melts pretty much everything. Like I've tried pretty much every action camera. I even tried the, the Action 4 for a couple days. I never even posted a video with it. I just wasn't a fan of the look. I don't know. Uh, I'm very particular about how the look is in the GoPro. They nailed it on the 12. The battery life is exceptional. It looks good to me. So that's the camera that I use and I swear by. I really do like what DJI is doing. I think if they put this sensor and the mics, in the, the new action 5 whenever that comes out then it'll be time to switch gopro will truly be in trouble because this the, the picture quality is just astounding out of this let's take this filter off i'm really not a fan of it yes i mean regardless i will be using this i wanted to like uh kind of get a feel for how the video looks oh, what's, going, what's going on man oh yeah hey let me get you doing a wheelie we're gonna go uh we're gonna go this way down the street oh hey man shout out to you man what's your instagram you want to plug yourself it's, X, it's fxd chicken FXD chicken. FXD dot chicken. Okay. Hey, give this guy a follow. I'm gonna put him in the video doing Willie. Alright, we're gonna go down this street doing a willy uh until the, the light. Let's do it. So go up here and make a left and we're gonna be on this street. Let's go. Okay, not bad. We had a little bit of exposure difference right there with the big billboard. That was good. That was good. All right, stop. Well, let's do the same thing going this way. Nice. 
Perfect. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for being part of the video. Thanks, man. Be oh, safe uh, out here. Okay, take care, man. You too. Already. <laughs> Holy crap. All right, um, you know, a little initial test of the, the pocket. We got dirt bikes. Oh, there's a Willy boy. Thought he's about 12 o'clock on us. And the taco truck, can't forget that. So, as you can see, this thing is exceptional as a B-roll device. Uh, I still need my GoPro, obviously, but it's, it's very good for what it does. It's kind of like anything that I would ever want to use like a big camera for, like an A7S or some type of mirrorless with a fancy microphone setup or a lens. I don't need it anymore. I really, I don't think I do. This kind of like, um, it fills whatever role that would have in my camera bag. So I really just have to worry about this in my GoPro. Like I said, if they put this tech in their next action cam, well, I'm going full day DJI. DJI. Party bus. That is so hard to say too. Why is DJI so difficult to pronounce? First thoughts of the DJI Pocket 3. I'm still amazed. It didn't do everything I thought it would do, so that's a little disappointing, but it's still really, really good at a few things. It's exceptionally well at a few things. And then it's decent at some other things, which I don't really need it to do. I wish it did do, but the fact that it doesn't is fine. Like life. Uh, I will continue using this and, and I try to get better with it. It's still a little tricky. It's caught me off guard at least like five times tonight, so it's gonna take a little bit of practice. But uh, yeah, check it out. I don't know if we can catch him, but this is Jason who rides his Wolf King scooter. He's on his motorcycle right now. We may be able to catch him right now. Oh, he's gonna be out of here. Oh, there he goes, that's him. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone with the wind. Someone's lasering me, you guys see that? Someone's trying to hit me with the green laser. If you guys are interested in this camera, it is linked in the description. I bought mine on Amazon, it came here the next day. Pretty good. I would've got it from DJI, but uh, the shipping took too long, so. We just missed a Ted Brack. Downtown LA for you folks. Anyways, pocket three, pretty good. Let's roll through this packed part of downtown. This is when you went that wide angle attachment probably. Oh, this is a one way. All right, we're gonna turn around. We can't even get through here. Honestly, I wish this thing had two cameras, so like right now, I'd be able to see myself as well without doing the 360 spin around. Let's go ahead and throw the wide angle on for this uh, area we're in. Very flimsy, this wide angle. I don't know about it yet. Pretty cool though, the shots you can get with this. We are going to make our way back to the Staples Center. It's way too crowded to ride around out here. It is nice though that it can flip, even though it does that weird flippy thing. You can't spin it around quickly if you want to get some footage like what's going on beside you. Hot dog carts, the overall packedness of downtown LA. You know, get some cinematography. And then you triple tap, bam, back on yourself. All right, folks, signing out from downtown. Pocket three. Pretty good. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace.